that's exactly such a thing. And similarly, we can define restricted plus and restricted types. Mm -hmm. So we have something like x plus a y and x times a y. Okay. And then, for example, one can define the integer part. Well, let's say the fraction x divided by y rounded off to, to above. And that will be the minimal set smaller than x such that z times x y equals x. And logarithm. Uh, okay, and uh, okay. I, I will skip the, the definition of remainder, but you can you can also do it knowing that remainder is also a small quantity which is uh, mm -hmm. which is restricted. So it's uh, I will skip that, but then you can define x times y equals z by, for example, x equals z and remainder zero. Um, similarly for logarithm. So for for plus uh, you can do something even simpler is simply because x equal uh, what was it? x equals z minus one and y is graph of plus is, is very easy to define. Graph of times sounds more working. Graph of logarithm, uh, uh, simply the function of logarithm. So what you can define, you can also define x x a in some in a similar way, restricted exponentiation. So it's something like two to the x is two to the x is smaller than a a over x. Recursion, and then you have something like like that. So you have integer part of the log two x again rounding upwards. That would be something like minimum y smaller than x such that x. then this is never happens so okay but just a gen general feeling is that uh, imagine skip this yeah, yeah. Let, 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 let's yeah. imagine we have a very complicated function uh -huh. of high complexity but of course primitive recursive but of high complexity uh -huh. but still uh, with small values so will it be in L or not so uh, I think I think not because I think one can infer some uh, uh, space complexity restriction from from that. I, I have not yet checked that fully in detail. So but, but uh, first, of, first of all, these functions are clearly elementary. So they are not only primitive recursive but Kalmar elementary. Mm -hmm. And be, because this is effectively so, if we uh, add to this schema uh, the condition that the function is bounded by the previously defined function, that will be called bounded recursion. Mm -hmm. and bounded recursion is is the main operator in so-called Djibochik hierarchy. Mm -hmm. But Djibochik hierarchy starts already from the class which is closed under plus one. Mm -hmm. So my my so I haven't yet fully checked it in, in mm -hmm. So what is clear that this class is contained in elementary, 
and it, it may even be contained in some point if you go to E0. Yeah. But I'm, I don't recall <laughs> quite uh, exactly what is E0, whether it's plus E0 or E0 or not. So I'm yeah. My, my, my expectation is that this contained in E0, and, and probably, probably it's also contained in linear space or something like that, because uh, you see the computation of, of that function, uh, oh. it uses, let's say, exponential number of steps. I'm sorry, uh, is it true that any function from the class L is uh, computed in polynomial space? In linear space. Linear space, well, but uh, in polynomial space, I think, I think, I think, it, I, 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 I think it, I, I th well, uh, <laughs> well, the only thing to check is uh, is to check the schema. Is it can, I think it's, it, I think it is can, can Okay, so you space. have answered the question. But you can proceed. Yeah, but about the usual reason why the, the primitive recursive function are not computable in polynomial space because the recursion goes up to a high number and then we make a substitution. Yes. So we have g of f of x and f of x is very high and it's argument of g and to compute g we need oh. to make many steps. But now uh, all other... Let's define the characteristic function of uh, complex uh, yeah, yeah, but language. It, but in, in, the, in the definition, in the intermediate steps, you use function which grow fast. Yes. And so to compute this even slow function, you need to make a recursion yes. up, up. But now we don't have any growing function. So um, we cannot have many steps. So uh, I don't understand your question. So the question is an explanation why all things are compatible. Yeah, but I think, I, I think you only run out of time. Oh, okay, okay. So I, I just let, 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 me, yeah, let yeah. me just state some statement. Let me, let me make some statement. So what, is, what else has to be done? We have to formulate the axioms of our theory. Mm -hmm. Now I will describe these axioms without writing them down, of course, but the axioms are basically the following. So we state that all these numbers are different, the predecessor of n plus 1 is n, right? So we have that. Uh, we state uh, axioms uh, uh, for inequality, which is definable by class. And our main axiom will be this one. Namely, we can uh, uh, do it like this. Instead of plus 1, we write n. Instead of n, a predecessor of n. And that will be n. So that's essentially our action. So, uh, um, yeah. for the last slide, we should say that that n is not zero. So n, n is zero. Okay. So this is axiom number one. This is axiom number two. If n is not zero. Then, mm -hmm. then so okay. this is a weak version, as I understand, of primitive recursion arithmetic. Exactly. Uh -huh. This is exactly as in primitive recursion arithmetic. And then you say that this axiom precisely allows us to compute the value of functions when we substitute numerals for them. Because it's exactly evaluating the function. Applying axiom from left to right is, is evaluating the function. And then the logical mechanism has all the means to, to prove that thing. That, that allows us to risk. So, so as we do in Q and primitive recursion, so to, to represent the substitution function itself. So nothing special is going on there. And of course, it is pi, pi 1 in this section. So that's the, uh, that, that's the finish of, of, of Willard's example. And <laughs> to conclude, I would like to repeat the sharp contrast with the Pudlet theorem that we have. Okay. Namely, uh, if we add to the theory an axiom stating that successor is uh, successor exists, so for every x uh, there is a y such that uh, x is a predecessor of y, uh, then <laughs> the resulting system will be inconsistent. So it will not have any, any of the extensions of, uh, it will not, t0 plus this axiom will not be inconsistent, but if we add the fixed point mm -hmm. we formulate it, then of course it will be inconsistent, because uh, uh, Let's say there is a version of uh, of Q of a theory Q formulated in the language where addition and multiplications are relations and successor is the only function. Mm -hmm. And then uh, for theories containing such a weak version of Q, uh, Pudlet theorem holds such theories cannot prove its consistency. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to, to go into Poodle, so it took 
of the lecture. But I think it's, in some sense, <laughs> it's more interesting because it's more new. So Pullman is a stuff of 30 years ago. And, uh, but it is some, some ver version of, I just, how to say this, ultra-intuitionistic belief that now you cannot, usually they say that you cannot increase number significantly, but now you are forbidden to, to increase anything which is not given. So you are, uh, yeah, yeah. You are just to, to deal with what you have. But it will be interesting, for example, is it, is it, is it believable that for maybe for predicate everything which belongs to L, is just exactly what is computed in, in, in linear space or what? But, but might be the case. I think that such, such, a characteriza such characterizations are quite common in that area of boundary arithmetic, etc. So, for example, if one replaces this primitive recursion by, uh, let's say, uh, so-called recursion annotation, right, okay, so the along binary words, so to say, when we sort of mm -hmm. go to shorter, shorter and shorter words, uh, uh, and uh, uh, put the restriction that the bounds for the function is polynomial as mm -hmm. additional restriction, then, then the, that is the correct definition of the class P. And the corresponding primitive recur version of primitive recursive arithmetic uh, was studied by, by Cook and the others, and it's called P, so it's essentially equivalent to S21 uh, in terms of probability of the totality of function. So such relations exist. I expect that one can characterize this in terms in complexity theoretic terms. Yeah, but so no, no, now, now you say that everything in, you, in this theory is computable in polynomial time, probably. No, or not, not, not in uh, Ah, yeah, because we have uh, uh, like linear, linear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the number of steps here yeah, is somehow uh, yeah, yeah. still still exponential. Still exponential yeah. Probably I, more I, like linear space. I still don't understand what's the point about this theory. Why is it interesting? And how it's related with Gödel theory? No, it's, it's a kind of weak theory, well, okay. no, when still, still, uh, mm -hmm. still s somehow it's enough for... No, okay, let me, let me, okay, let okay. me say the, the main message. So, the, so far, uh, all the counterexamples to Gödel theorem which I mentioned, they were of the following kind. They were playing with the definition of, of consistency. So mm -hmm. if one chooses somehow artificial or not quite standard or non-natural, non formulation of consistency, then one can violate the second one. Okay. So everyone in the area believes somehow that this is the only source of, uh, somehow we implicitly assume that this is uh, somehow the, the real, uh, where, where everything is violated, it's on the level of playing with incorrect definitions. Okay. And here all the definitions are very canonical. They, uh. they are really standard natural consistency, okay. naturally formulated, everything is natural. Okay. Only the axioms are weak and also weak in a partial sense, because in the sense of proving pi one statement, they are also strong. They are strong as p. Okay, one. very good. And yeah. and this and still and still it, 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 it proves it. its consistency. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Ah, but it, it is it is not written. It was it was written. It was written, it was written, it was written because it's just an axiom. It was an axiom. That Where? But it was there. Yeah, you see even. The so, uh, so, yeah, yeah, so you see, uh, here it was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they have a proof. But that, that was about another theory. About T. Yes, T is T0 plus yeah. R. Okay. No, so of course T0 doesn't prove its consistency because... T0 doesn't prove its consistency. What, yeah, but it I, I, I yeah. completely missed. Uh -huh. uh, okay, uh, so uh, confused. Me, I see what T0 you was defined previously at the... Uh, no, T0 is just all this type strange theory where you c cannot add one, but you can do a a a all, all, all other things. Yes. <laughs> and then you have T, uh, when you add the, 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 the statement that T is consistent by a fixed point. Okay. And by strange argument with this finite model, you see that T is indeed consistent and it proves its consistency. So T is obtained by, from T0 by adding a very strange action, right? Just not very strange, just saying that T is consistent. We add whatever we want. But okay. I and T0 is just this theory, with yeah. this, this, uh, this weak primitive recursive. Yeah, theory. yeah. And does T0, defined in this way, satisfies all those ideas? Yes. Ah, I see. Now I got the point. You had just defined T0 which satisfies it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Okay. So the promise uh, now is more or less fulfilled. What is T0? There uh, is some uh -huh. feeling of water. Uh -huh. okay. I see. Okay, so theoretically we have a coffee break here. Yeah, but actually, I don't know where. I, I no, no, I think it should be. 
because the idea was to, to move it all. <laughs> I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I was expected.